everybody to the March 3rd um, Identifying Security Threats Working Group meeting. We have a couple, uh, well, uh, I guess one new folk on the, on the line. John, hi, welcome. Um, would you mind doing a, just a quick intro while I share screen and we'll... Sure, absolutely. Hi, uh, John Meadows uh, um, in uh, DevSecOps Engineering, Cloud Security Engineering uh, from Citibank. Awesome, welcome. Uh, since we only have like, there's like seven people on the, on the line. Maybe we'll just do a quick a quick round um, for for John and everybody else. Okay. Um, why, why don't you declare who speaks next? Because otherwise, it's confusing. There you go, David. You win. Okay. You win. All right. So I'm I win. Uh, win. <laughs> see the see the scare quotes. So David Wheeler. I work at the Linux Foundation, uh, and my task really is to try to help. Uh, I'm, my overall task is I'm trying to help open source software be more secure in the context of OpenSSF in this group. I'm trying to provide support uh, where it's helpful from a technical viewpoint, anywhere from convincing to uh, uh, writing code and so on. Uh, among the things that's relevant in this context, I also lead, I lead the CI best practices badge, which is one of the data inputs to this cool thing. <laughs> that uh, Michael has uh, been kicking off here. So, uh, okay, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Keep going, sorry. That's it, next. Cool. Who's next? Uh, Amir. Hello, my name is Amir. I work for OSTIF, the Open Source Technology Improvement Fund. We're a corporate nonprofit that specializes in helping projects and organizations facilitate and get access to better security resources, security audits, and the like. Uh, thanks. Um, we have somebody from Security Compass, uh, Avalani. Yep, it's uh, Altes here. Hi, everybody. I work with the Security Compass. I just joined. Uh, I assume we're doing introductions. Is that what this? Yes. Great, cool. Uh, so welcome. You know, I mean, I just uh, love to see everybody here. Um, we're very interested in the whole space of uh, security and coding. I see some familiar faces here as well. Uh, so just looking forward to contributing. Thanks. Awesome. Uh, Dan? Sure, so I just joined a couple minutes late, so I missed the beginning part. Um, yeah, my name is Dan Lawrence. I'm uh, an engineering lead um, at Google on our open source security team. Thanks. Uh, Dylan? Uh, hey, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Dylan. I am a fourth year engineering student at UC Berkeley, um, former intern with Mike, and I've been, um, yeah, really interested in, in kind of working on all this open source, um, you know, the open source and security space. And yeah, I'm happy to, to be here and contribute with you guys. Cool. And Luigi? And I am a security engineer, and uh, uh, I'm working in this uh, group from uh, well, some months, I think. And uh, yes, I like open source ecosystem, and I think we need uh, to improve the security. So I hope to contribute to this uh, to this goal. Awesome, uh, Radic. From you. We'll come back, uh, Ryan. Hello, I'm Ryan Haining. I'm a program manager at Microsoft and focus on open source security. Cool. I think I think we're good. Uh, super. So uh, here's the agenda for today. Uh, although let's talk since we were talking about metrics dashboard. Let's put up the top. I do want to talk a bit about the dependency confusion attacks that have been uh, that have been going on, um, and talk a little bit about what we can actually do about that. Since identifying security threats is in our working group name, uh, maybe we should be doing some identifying security threats, um, and then talk a little bit about the security reviews project and current state and um, the, the the blog that we were going to publish, um, and just kind of. Um, Kind of go from there. If you guys have anything else that you want to talk about, please add it to the topics list. Uh, if you don't have access to this, um, uh, I'll I'll shoot a link. Let me 
Why don't you post the, the link anyway? Yeah, I'm, I'm always afraid of like posting the wrong link and it's like the private link that I can't ever unpost. Uh, oh no. <laughs> We'll just do that. Uh, you know, I, I have I have a link, and I presume it's not the amazing master link. So why don't uh, I post it? And well, uh, too late posted it. So. Too late. Uh, okay. Well, hopefully it's the uh, hopefully it's the okay to post and not the yeah. disaster to post. It'll, it'll be, we'll be we'll be fine. We we can all trust each other. We're security folks. Um, <laughs> cool. So metrics dashboard. Um, David, you you were you were on a roll, so I don't want to. Yeah, so I, I I have you know I, I didn't realize that you had it actually up. So first of all, congrats! I'm really glad. Now let's talk about next steps. <laughs> so I just put in the meeting notes what I think needs to happen next. Um, I think that that front page, that top page, needs to make it clear that this is an early proof of concept. I mean, I don't have any trouble with turning the proof of concept into the real thing, but just, you know, to help people understand that, you know, this is not the final, this is, it's early work in progress. You can see it be, getting cooked. Um, I think we need to set that front page to a project that, you know, makes, you know, like the real, yeah. Kubernetes, real Kubernetes would be great. Set the, set the search, set the uh, component name. I, I assume you can do that. Yeah, yeah. I don't, uh, uh, and it, it, it was just what was in there last when I saved it. it does not right, right. Reason. But I, I think we need to, I, I think it's important to set them on a page just so they can get an idea of what this is. Mm -hmm. And then let's, uh, I, I, I think we can just set a redirector from metricsopensf.org yeah. to point to this. And then somebody can type in metricsopensf.org, poof. Okay, it's not done. It's really early, but it, you can see what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think that would be. I, yeah. I think that would be. I think we would get more people involved and more help once they see that there's not just a bunch of people jawing. That there's something to look at. That's probably true. Yeah. Um, do you think we should have kind of a base landing page that? You kind of have a learn about the project and like here, like get involved and then click on the dashboard to actually see it. And then, uh, if you if you can, it'd be great to have a landing. Uh, it'd be great to have a landing page. I, I just, I, I, you mentioned that you were not a uh, Grafana wizard, so if that's if that's too no, hard, I, you know, no, I, no, I, it's I, fine. I, I would go to Grafana after the landing page. The landing page is just. Because it's all, oh. it's, all just, it's all just a VM, so I could we could do whatever we want. Oh, uh, okay, all right. Like, actually, like messing with the Grafana like internals, that um, there's a wizardry about that. But... Okay, yeah, a, like a little a little front page that explains what it is, and then a click that says, "Hey, you want to see some examples? Click here to see Kubernetes. Click here to do that." Um, I imagine that uh, you can set within a URL the uh, search value in the component selection. Um, Ninety-nine percent sure of that. Yeah, I th I, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll make sure that happens. Um, cool. Yeah, I, 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 I want a balance between you know if if we if it's too rough. People go, ah, it's ridiculous, but yeah. it doesn't have to be done. You know, really, no. I think you've you already have something. It's no longer a concept. You're actually showing real data, and yeah. I could see using this. Um, now there, I, I do have, you know, as we talked about before, I have complaints about some of the data you're collecting, and I don't know why it's not showing 90 day number of contributors on Kubernetes because I know it's got them. So, yeah. <laughs> so there are things to fix, but I, I, I just. You know, we got to balance the, if we fix it forever and we never post anything, uh, we're not going to get that, uh, that, that influx of folks and interest. And it takes an incredible amount of time to uh, get people aware of stuff. Yeah. You, know, the, the, I, you know, speaking of someone who does the CI best practices badge, it's been around for what, six years? And I am in the process of trying to get people to hear about it for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> so we, it, it, we, we need something to point people to yeah. to start getting that process. Okay. So um, we do need to talk about like long term ownership of the infrastructure. Because uh, yep. right now, this is in like 
my some test Azure subscription that I have, which is fine for now. It's not, it's not going to go anywhere, but I personally should not own the the infrastructure for this um, long term. Right. Um, right. Okay. So 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 UX on the landing page. Who is there? Anybody on this call that can that is is willing to and capable of building the UX for for? I mean, it's going to be a basic landing page with like here's some info and FAQ and click here in a picture of the dashboard and that goes to a link. You you don't want me to do the UX. I'd be happy to write some of the text <laughs> or bits on the text. I, I'm looking uh, for an owner that will make that will keep this part of it out of my brain. So. <laughs> I can do that. Uh, part, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Awesome. Go ahead. Said I can do that part, Mike and, and David. I'll happily copy whatever text you'd like to write. <laughs> okay. So Ryan's gonna. Uh, okay, and then uh, Mike, if you want to write the the initial text, because I'm sure you have specific text in mind, I would be happy to uh, to uh, to your bits it. Otherwise, I will write the text and. Uh, that okay perfect perfect and then, i know i know we talked about this a couple times i'm sure it's in the notes here somewhere on who to talk to 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 make this happen um i'll i'll dig that out and do that so me okay. refresh frequency i just will make it a, I don't know, a week it, it, oh. I, I for 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 purposes of what we're doing right now it doesn't matter I, I think whatever yeah. it is, just I think the last time it was December, so more than more than every three months. Because there you go, every, every week or every day, either one I think would be fine. Okay. Uh, target projects. We'll just start and we'll do the. We'll continue to do the CII best practice. Sorry, I should just call it best practices and scorecard. Yeah, we still uh, haven't. Uh, we. we I, I'm still using the CII because there's the open, the best practices working group does many things. Yeah, so yeah. I'm still using the term CII until someone tells me otherwise. Cool. <laughs> um, and this will we'll defer to sometime soon. This is pretty cool, by the way. Just had to play oh. around with it. Yeah. Sure. Like it. Good start, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I think we need, I think we, I, I'm looking forward to more people knowing how to find this and looking at it because I do think that people are going to have that reaction. The, yeah, we know there's things to be fixed, um, but you know it, it's clearly moving on. And I think that's actually one of the other things is on the text. Hey, it's pre, you know this is preliminary. We would love your feedback. <laughs> yep. Cool. Um, okay. Anything else on the metrics dashboard side? So I, th I think our goal will be in the next two weeks to have, I think we can have, uh, I think we can have all this done. Well, but, but I don't know what's involved in, in the metrics C name thing. Um, either way, with or without the, the, the C name, we should be able to have this done in the next two weeks. So I think. Yeah, and Mike, if you have any problems, uh, let me know because um, uh, I'd be happy to, you know, to contact the IT folks and make things happen so wonderful uh okay so next up is uh def the dependency confusion attacks is anybody not aware of this um whatever you want to call it yeah they're, they're generally dependency confusion or substitution attacks are the two phrases that i've seen the most okay yeah, so 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 this is specifically this um, uh, this this article. Oh. Yep. Hey, he made money at it. He did <laughs> who says you can't make money at security? Absolutely, and and yeah. <laughs> um, so so yeah, so it's been it's been busy over the past literally like twelve hours after the blog article went out. Um, there was just another article that I just saw this morning um, that Sonotype, Sonotype found something like 700 um, of these. Uh, we've been, so we built tooling that, that we've been scanning since a couple weeks before it went public. Um, and we found, I mean, we're up to 6,000 packages removed 
and a larger number of, of projects that have not yet been removed. So yeah, who, who's the our work? I, I'm confused by the Oh, hour. sorry, sorry, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I should. Uh, so as part of, oh, I didn't even introduce myself. I'm sorry, John. So I run an open source security team at Microsoft. We do proactive security reviews, um, build tooling, um, generally try to um, push push the organization in the right direction and do things like this with OpenSSF and, and, and other um, safe code and some other orgs uh, on, let's say, advancing the state of open source security generally. Um, so as part of this, we run, we build a lot of tools. One of the tools is looking for these kind of dependency confusion attacks. Um, so we look for packages that have been registered internally uh, that don't appear in the public. And then all of a sudden, whoop, they appear in the public. Um, and then we use that to kind of, then we then we dig in and see what's going on. So as a result of this, we found uh, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of packages. Um, most of them have been, uh, in fact, I can, I can show you some of them. Um, most of them have been- uh, Michael. Go ahead. Yep. A, a question about uh, um, these packages. Um, do you think that Microsoft uh, um, will share some data or information about uh, uh, these malicious ecosystem packages. I mean, uh, like uh, the name or uh, the um, file, the, yes, the malicious code that they usually use and similar information because maybe uh, um, Microsoft ha has worked on uh, PyPy and NPM, but maybe same uh, similar packets can be found in uh, other ecosystem and maybe um, information in data, uh, open data about uh, um, these uh, Microsoft research can help uh, others to identify malicious packages. Do you think uh, it is possible to share data or not? I don't know uh, if it is the if you are the right question if you are the right person for this question, but I think it's well, uh, interesting yeah. data. So, so I, I I would like to share as much like obviously I'm not going to share anything until the package is taken down. But then the and and honestly, if you've seen like three of them, you've seen them all. Like they're they're not so um, different that you need to see like every single one. Um, in fact, most of them are just, it's, it's just a template. Uh, but we published this um, this security review, which isn't hasn't been merged yet, but this is one of the first ones uh, that came out. Um, and where is it? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, you know what? I do not include the source code of the actual thing in this. Um, Yes, uh, we, we can. I think we can provide more information. Um, I want to work with the NPM team and and PyPy if I can um, to kind of. I mean, I think there should be some sort of a joint like response to this and get all of this information out. Um, the uh, da, da, da. Yeah, yeah, these are kind of sterilized. Um, let, let me let me pull up the actual code so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Um, Because uh, I am, I don't know, maybe it is um, only my concern, but uh, uh, PyPy and NPM are, uh, um, in, from uh, some point of view, are uh, um, solid ecosystem and solid uh, um, package, uh, package manager, uh, if uh, we can uh, uh, call them so. But uh, for other languages that are uh, um, I use it usually in the back end, like Golang. Now there is a, there isn't a, a so solid uh, ecosystem. So uh, I think uh, similar attacks can be easier in, uh, in for some languages uh, like Go because it is new, it is uh, young, and uh, yes, uh, uh, <laughs> it, it is growing now. And uh, yeah, reason, uh, whether, whether or not it's new or not. I, I don't think it matters. I, I think for the dependency confusion, what matters is the package managers have to, in the long term, build in the countermeasure. Uh, so that this, I mean, f I would say fundamentally, defend. I, I would argue dependency confusion is a vulnerability in certain package package managers. If you can declare a package and it could be in multiple repos, you've there's a screw up. 
And I, we need to fix, and it's going to take yeah. a while because that's going to require changes for a lot of folks. But in the long term, that's the only winning game in this. Because if we expect people to always be perfect, that is never going to work. Mm -hmm. If the package managers automatically say, wait a minute, I don't know which repo that is. I Please fix this. Um, then you're going to be fine. Right. And, and that's kind of the, the trade-off that was made many years ago, which is not to have a global namespace within the, the package managers is really the thing that's biting everybody now. So you, know, uh, you don't need it. No, no, no. You don't need a global namespace. There's no requirement for a global namespace. There's a requirement when you say load package X, there's only one repo you go to. It oh. doesn't have to be global. It could be local to that package. Sure. But whatever it is, it, right. there must not be more than one option. And there's a million ways to solve it. Right. Right. Um, yeah. So, so, so what we're seeing in these attacks is like, like this, this is one that there were 50, 5,300 packages that were published uh, in PyPy. They've all been removed. Um, but this, this was, they, they all look like this. So this is an attack. Yep. The name lab is the, it was the package name and it's just, you know, doing this, it's, it's just pinging the service the, the, this, presumably this is, you know, the, the researcher or attacker or whatever we're going to call them, um, owns that, that IP certainly. Um, so that's, that's one. And, and so the way that I would categorize what I've seen so far is that, that they fall into one of like three or four categories. One is that they just do a ping. And is this, is this, is this malicious? Well, not really. I mean, it's it's certainly designed to break something to call attention to something. So if your service goes down as a result, I think you'd be pretty upset. Um, but it it's not like doing anything other than than doing that ping. And then the next level up from this, they is what what I wrote about here. What they do is they exfiltrate. Um, the, it's usually the host name, the username, and a local path. Um, this was done a lot for bug bounty money. So, you know, they'll even say it in the thing that I'm, I'm, I made this package to collect bug bounty money from HackerOne. Um, and you look and he's like, well, okay, so username and local path, there could be something sensitive in there. And at that point, you're like, I, I think I think that that point, in my opinion, at least crosses the line of like, you know, this should be this should definitely be taken down. Um, and then one level up from there, exfiltrates environment variables. Um, or other sensitive files, and I think that's what the I didn't I didn't read the full Sonotype type article, but I, from the first paragraph, it seemed like that's that's what those were doing. Um, and then one level up from there is like full reverse shell, like real ex, you know, pulling down random code and running it, and and all of that stuff. So, um, yeah, the, I, I think the problem is the 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 weaker ones may be just tests for the later ones. I mean, Solar Winds was a Wonderful yep. example of that. The attack actually was much earlier. Well, the the subversion was earlier, but it didn't do anything, and it seems to have been a test to see if they could get it through. Absolutely, and and because they they're since they're counting installs, they know which ones are being used and by whom. So yep. they can they can you know it, there's it it is super dangerous to have these things out there. Um, so I'm you know I feel like we're playing whack a mole, um, and and seeing new. Like the the general pattern is pretty easy um, to to spot. The specific patterns change. They're always sending it to different servers and things like that. Um, but what we do have is, and maybe this is an opportunity for for kind of a tooling thing here. Um, so we do have a tool that looks specifically for backdoors, um, and this is a public tool that that has been out there for 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 quite a while, um, and it's. It's just regexes. So, you know, as an example, th this is one that we've, you know, it, if, if I see the word dot user info uh, anywhere in anything, it'll it'll pop out. Now, there's gonna be false positives, obviously. Um, in PowerShell, if you invoke um, and then you have the environment variable specified in the same line, that'll that'll pop out. So all of these are are, are meant, you know, to to catch the needles at the expense of you having to look through a little bit of hay, um, you know, but uh, I'm, I'm planning to 
expand these rules a bit with what we learned from um, uh, for, from all of this. So at least it'll catch like the common, you know, all the common patterns. Um, I think it would separately be really interesting to talk to the ecosystems about building this stuff in to the publishing pipeline so they don't get out to be seen in the first place. But right. By yeah. the way, uh, the uh, open oh, I, I typed in a little later on the text. The Open SSF Security and Critical Projects Working Group has been also working on some things. Uh, in particular, they've got two projects, uh, package feeds and package analysis. Package mm -hmm. feeds monitors the various repos to report, oh, look, this package got updated or this package yep. just got. And then package analysis is one program to analyze. And I think they're theorizing that you'll be plugging in many different analyzers so right. maybe your maybe this thing that you're talking about could be plugged in or are you talking about package analysis no 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 it, for, for it, it this predates um open ssf by a bit uh okay but, but yes it, it should be able to plug in uh and we also released the the typo squatting detection um uh one as well so given a uh, um uh Given a thing, do this on the fly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you can slap in the URLs, that'd be awesome. Yeah, and it's all cross plat and all that. So, okay. Mm. Well, it says find squats. squats. We're not very good with names. So, <laughs> actually, you know, it might not be bad. Uh, it's it's probably unique. Um, yeah, probably yeah. So, it, what it does is it is it um, takes left pad, finds all the permutations, and looks for each permutation in the in the package manager. So it's kind of it's not super smart, but the generator um, tends to find some good some good things. We we found a bunch of um, uh, like malicious type of squatting um, using this. Cool. Um, so if there's anybody that would like to contribute to this, uh, here I will do, do, do gadget. Uh, contributions are always welcome, partnership, whatever. Um, I, I just, I think we, I think we, we're still in the position where we need more better tools. So, however, however, all of this works is is great. Um, and also, I should, I should just give a uh, a shout out. Thank you to uh, Libraries IO, um, which has been invaluable. Um, their their API uh, for uh, listening to the ecosystem as new packages get published. Um, there's a API search where if you if you search for basically everything and sort by latest publish date, you can kind of keep your thumb on the stream of new publishes going by, uh, which has which is awesome. I don't know how I would replicate this without something like that. So I thought they've gotten kind of gone kind of quiet. Have they they've uh, reinvigorated? Sounds like uh, I've been using the service for about two years, doing doing various things with that with that stream. It's still working. Okay. Um, I I don't uh, know if are, it's, yeah, are, are they're, but they're continuing. Yeah, I I used it several years ago. In fact, I sent in several bug fixes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm painfully familiar with it. Well, they've yeah. gotten a lot better. Right? When yeah. they first started, there were teething pains. You'll be shocked to know. Yep. Yep. I think the other thing that they, that they do pretty pretty okay is is normalizing um, data between different package managers. We're kind of using that as inspiration for the OSS metadata project, which is intended to be um, just give me the metadata in a fully normalized by you know between the different ecosystems view of something so i can compare apples to apples um so do, doing things like give me all the authors of all packages you know call whatever foo um across you know cpan through 
Go or GitHub or anything else. So we're trying to make it this kind of Swiss Army knife of of um, OSS tools. Um, gotcha. Okay. Somehow we, I, I think it'd be good to try to connect these various projects together. I, I'm not mm -hmm. sure how, but being being aware of each other is probably step one. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Cool. Anything else from a dependency confusion perspective? Cool. Um, hi, uh, Art. I see. See you joined. Welcome. You're on mute, but that's okay. <laughs> um, so, do you want to go to the next bullet, Mike? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, so, uh, OSS security reviews. So, blog announcement. So, yeah. So, for everybody that has contributed uh, or or done anything with with the security reviews project. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think we're we're off to a, to a good start. I may have uh, been a little bit over optimistic on how fast we would be able to like um, um, <laughs> stick data in. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I noticed Ostiff's put in a few, but I I know yep. Ostiff has more, and my understanding is Microsoft also has some more. Yep. Um. I mean, frankly, just between Ostev and, and and Microsoft, that's uh, that that should be a pretty hefty list. Um, yep, are, is, it to get, is it likely? Is it likely? Just added. I just added another review, and I'll probably add the rest of ours. But I added our Unbound DNS review. Mm -hmm. That was a really solid uh, source code audit. We found like forty-eight vulnerabilities, one critical CVE, and five high. Uh, CVEs. So nice. I did include that. Uh, there's a pull request now, Michael. So if you need me to do anything with that, just let me know. That's perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I, I guess the question is, do we have reason to hope that the first ones were hard because of the first ones and it'll get much faster? Or is this mostly it's challenging no matter what we do? I So I can give you my perspective. Um, I want to... Um, I think the first couple are going to be hard because we're still trying to answer the question, like what, what should be in it. <laughs> well, yeah, like is, is this is this a list of vulnerabilities that have been fixed? Is this like I, I, I know a point came up that I've been I've been struggling to to write like rationalize in my head, like should we just be giving good news? Should we just be saying that you know this project was reviewed? Yeah, it had some bugs, but they've been fixed. Or we looked at this thing and it's and it's all good. Like, should we be ever, should we ever be saying this thing is dangerous? Um, and I, it, it, I I think if if that's the if that is the correct answer, then by all means say so. Even though even if other people may disagree, mm -hmm. I think as long as we don't try to claim as long as we claim it, you know, X says Y, as opposed to this is tr this is eternal truth. <laughs> well, because I, so, I think I, I think you could say I fixed I found X vulnerabilities, but this entire program is just designed to be a disaster. Um, I mean, I would have said that about OpenSSL about five about t uh, uh, six seven years ago. Um, you know, and yes, it's you know there are there are um, you, there are things you can complain about it now, but it's far better than it was. Yeah. So so do you think so if you so, so if if um, let's say if you, as a maintainer or an open SS, like not a third party researcher, looked at open SS, we'll, we'll just call it foo. Well, you looked at foo and you said foo is 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 just garbage. Like nobody should be using foo. Um, it, in other words, like are we? Is there a difference fundamentally between third party assessments, like like a mere like? Push, putting the ones that Ostiff did independently and linking to it, or the Zlib one from Trail of Bits, or things like that, and ones that like somebody like looks at Foo, makes it comes to some decision on and and some thoughts on Foo, and then types out their thoughts and adds that as as a first party review that doesn't have any other resources linked to it. So first party review review? You mean review of of, uh, of yourself? No, no, no. Sorry. Sorry, uh, David. This this is you reviewing OpenSSL, 
and typing out what you think about OpenSSL in this. Okay. Uh, as being different than Trail of Bits or, or NCC or somebody doing a review, uh, doing a- Okay, a, uh, you're talking corporate. about individual versus corporate. Uh, yeah, well, the, the difference between curating already existing reviews and creating ah. content specifically for this, I think is, is what I'm- Oh, I see. I, I, don't, I think we should allow the other. I mean, we're, I think we're hoping to have many reviews, right? I, so yes. I, I, yes. Think, I think the issue that we have really is a matter of quality. Um, if somebody just says, eh, I don't like it, I don't think we want that in there. We said curated. But I think we, by curated, yeah. uh, we, we have been a little vague. And maybe mm -hmm. that's the real problem. Uh, you asked, when is the right time to announce this? I think the right time to announce this is one, we have some examples. We got that, frankly. And two, I think we need to lay out much more specifically what are the criteria for being included. More specific about what ca can be included. And I don't think it should be a matter of individual versus company, but I do mm -hmm. think it should be a matter of quality. In particular, you can't just say X is garbage. You can say right. X is garbage, and here are the five reasons and which are, you know, you may not come to the same conclusion, but the facts are unassailable. Right. So, uh, you know, so, 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 so I think I think that right now is the blocker for the blog announcement is – um, I mean, we could always improve what the reviews are, and I think we should have more. I think we should add some more. You know, Austin's already working on that. You have some left to add. But I think the other main thing is th here is what we include. Here, this is what we allow. This is what we disallow. Yeah. Must uh, have, uh, you know, it must not, I would say, not be, must not be first party, must not be a review yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Must be third party review, not yourself. Right. Well, actually, so so that, that that's actually interesting because one of the things that we um, say here in the quick start page, which I need to change over to Dylan's Dylan's version of this that looks a lot nicer, is what is your association? Um, so if you, I think if you are a contributor or it's somehow related to the project, and I think it gets so. So, so much in a gray area, because um, who owns uh, that is <coughs> you're right. once it's closed. I think it's okay, um, and also a compensation source. And I and I, I I really don't like these words, but I couldn't come up with better words to mean kind of this. Like, if you choose, like, and I don't think we should force anybody to to declare a compensation source. But like, if you were paid by the project to do a security review of it, like that's relevant to your review. And if you were paid by a different organization. I think that's relevant to it, you know, um, uh, for a different way. Um, I'm actually not sure what to put for like, actually what my team does. Like, I don't know that if, if we're being like, obviously we're being, we have a salary, but sure. we're not being paid in any way to do any specific review. Um, but. Well, I, I see, I think that, I think the key thing is, are you being paid by what's being evaluated? That's probably, yeah. Yeah, I think it is important to note that because it could reveal some information. And it's, it's funny you bring that up because that was actually one of the main reasons we started OSTIF was to have kind of like a third party, independent, objective, almost, you know, party that's separate to, to be involved. Because sometimes, yeah, it could be, yeah, we, we chose the auditor, we paid for it, and we, and they, and we think everything is okay. Yeah. And, you know, that could potentially be, you know, yeah. Well, let, let, let's, let's go down to brass tacks, because I think there are some examples that make this potentially complicated, but I think it's fine as long as it's revealed. Um, the Linux Foundation includes the Linux kernel project. The Linux Foundation is paying Ostiff for two, well, for multiple <laughs> Linux kernel evaluations. Okay. Is there a relationship? Yes. Uh, will people, should it be disclosed? I think absolutely. 
I think there is no question in my mind that that funding stream should be disclosed. My expectation is that most people who understand this will really go, yeah, what a surprise, <laughs> and move on and, yeah. you know, and read. Because I, I, think Agreed, really, yeah. I think really the goal here is to try to give, I think overall it's the, it's the, it, the goal is to have high quality and not, you know, goal is a high quality. Yeah. Absolutely. And kind of going back to what you said earlier, Mike, about, you know, being too opinionated, I think as long as it's focused on being a forum of facts and showing, you know, what mm -hmm. was done and uh, giving people the tools to, to make that opinion for themselves, I, I don't think we should run into any problems. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, one, one quick thing I just want to kind of jump in and, and mention is um, I, I do think it's a little important just like while we're considering this in terms of like the content that we're kind of, uh, you know, while we're kind of figuring that out right now, that this does kind of directly reflect on the project metrics project, right? Like, like what we do, what we write here will like potentially be showing up as like a potential section there, right? right? So if we do bottleneck things a little bit by being more careful about the content or the scope or, you know, not kind of looking at just general like already public like normal CVEs and stuff like that, then if someone just like wants to search something in the project metrics dashboard like, oh, like NPM slash whatever, like they might just end up with like a blank kind of like, well, unless we have like customer views for all of those, like I think um, they might potentially limit content there. I, I don't know, just like something to keep in mind. I don't know. Yeah, and this kind of goes back to like, should we include like the NPM advisories as reviews and should we kind of sync them somehow? And um, honestly, I'm going back and forth on that. Yeah, it's a whole other can of worms, I don't know. Yeah, like I, I think that it's totally relevant information, but perhaps as a peer to the security reviews where the NPM security advisories is more like a CVE and other kind of vulnerability disclosure because I, I like the, 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 there are no NPM security advisories that say, yeah, this one looks great. Um, yeah. It's all, it's only it's only bad things. Um, so maybe the metrics dashboard should should prov provide a view into publicly known vulnerabilities coming from multiple sources, um, and not kind of shove everything into the security reviews. Yeah, yeah, that that could be a good way to kind of sidestep that. Yeah, not just because then you run into that. The NPM kind of advisories, but all sorts of like public, I don't know, kind of other yeah. disclosures and stuff. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, right what, now we haven't talked about this, but the idea of the metrics connecting into like the National Vulnerability Database. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we've talked about that, but uh, um, I think that might be, that might definitely help uh, connect uh, metrics dashboard. With, I'll spell it out, National Vulnerability Database NVD as well, so you can see vulnerability history for yourself. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I would say, I would say, et cetera, because there's yeah. actually other databases. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, so going, going along with that point, would it be a good idea to have consistent categories then if if it's feeding different data points uh, to kind of structuralize, you know, was it a source code review or was it like an ancillary review, um, you know, or, or something like that to kind of uh, standardize the categories in a way? Yeah, so, so I tried to do that with this. I know that there aren't enough categories here, um, but uh, at least I thought that if this was, if I was just referring to something you know cure 53 did i would probably just call it an external review but if it was something I, that yeah but by the way if i can having uh b bearing some past scars if you can try to avoid creating categories Add yeah. a, instead create a bunch of yes no's did this did this review source code did this do fuzzing you know check the boxes because otherwise what you're going to find is that i have five categories and half of the project, half of the reviews don't fit a category because they, <laughs> well, this yep. one did a source code review, this one didn't, and this yeah. one did this, and so. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point. 
Uh, as I said, uh, past scars. <laughs> yep. Totally agree. Cool. Um, okay. okay. So, so I think for the blog announcement, I don't, I, I think, I, I think we, I mean, we've actually quietly uh, mentioned this in several things. Um, I think, I mean, how long will it take for Microsoft and Ostiff at least to add what they've done? I mean, at that point, what's for sure you've got that. Yeah, I, I think in the next two weeks Wait, I can tops. get another dozen yeah. or so. And so, so yeah, that, that that should be no problem. Um, but, but why don't we? Why don't we I, have I, as the aim? Th that would be fine. I think my. Uh, um, I would like to see more diversity of organizations that contribute, and and maybe it's caught before the horse, and you know you have to announce it in order for people to know to come to the party. Um, what I'm, what I'm a little afraid of is only, you know, whatever, three, three organizations contribute and everybody else just looks at it and says, cool, thanks. And that's, and there's no like, um, either incentive or peer pressure or whatever to, to get, um, you know, to keep the resource building. And maybe maybe it's just too early to to have that. I should just be quiet and just just move on. Um, I, I I think it's a legitimate concern, but um, I I I think that in some sense the easy way I, I think the easy thing to do is start by announcing the party. Yeah. And I I don't think your concern is unreasonable. I think it's very very reasonable. But um, uh, before we try to try to solve the problem let's try to do the easy yeah. and we may we may not need to solve the problem yeah. in, because the problem will be solved <laughs> yep yep but but you know if if it turns out that we've added all this stuff we've put it out and keep announcing it and there's no ad additions now i will say that lf does intend to um you know uh, fund more audits uh i know that there's been some discussions within the open ssf uh, like the critical working group to eventually fund a number of audits. Uh, should that happen, my expectation is that every single one of them will end up here. So if nothing else, cool. they'll be. I'm. Uh, that. I, 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 I would be. I would be happy. Yeah. That 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 sounds good. Um, let's just do it. Yeah. Um, and then okay. So so for the actual blog uh, art announcement, Amir, you, I think you have the the current version. Would you mind posting a link to that in here and folks on the on the you know, on the call, um, please give feedback and l let's kind of um, polish this off. Uh, I think from a workflow perspective, we need to give it to the governing board or the steering co or whatever the- a Governing board, you give it to the governing, governing board if it's an announcement, yes. Yeah, and then governing board, I think either meets Fridays or every other Friday, or at some point they'll, they'll review it, they'll give it a thumbs up and then it'll go out. So there's probably like a, I don't know, eight or 10 day lead time um, yeah, you're, you're you're not going to need to wait for their meetings. I, I can tell you their meetings are, but I think for this, that's going to be irrelevant. Okay. Uh, they're going to want to do an email vote. So, okay. uh, and that Perfect. just and you know, there's a time period to give everybody a chance to read it. Yeah, yeah. But it, yeah, it, I don't I don't expect an issue. They'll be delighted. Okay, so then do we do we want to plan for? Let's see, our next meeting I think is the fifteenth. Do we want to plan for a blog article? If the blog article to go long, I, I don't know what day of the week is the right is the better day. I know, I'm sure there's a bad day. I think Friday is probably a bad day, so maybe Monday, maybe the 22nd. Yeah, I, I would I would actually talk if you want. Like I can talk with uh, our uh, pub publicity folks uh, to make sure that it goes out on good times. Yeah. Um, and in fact, uh, if you want, we can. Uh, I don't I don't know if this is a good thing. Yeah, I'm not so sure you want a press release on this. Actually, I think you want this as a blog post. I, but that makes sense to me. It, it's not. It, it, it's it's an announcement of a of of some initial work, not a. You you don't. I don't think you want press on this yet. Correct. <laughs> right. Um. So I think just go as an announcement on as a blog post and. Okay. Uh, uh. But yeah. But but I I think it's very important that we nail down on the website, not just in the blog post, the criteria for what it, it, what is required to be included. Do you think we've got that? I'm not, so, I, last I looked, I, I think it was a little sparse. 
Um, let's see, what did we do? So we went with it. So, so we do have a quality bar. Um, and then this is really like instructions for the PR reviewer, which is really the what does it take to get it to get it in here? Um, so, you know, there's some a, a week of kind of time for others to review. We need two project maintainers need to approve it before it gets merged. Um, you, you can't bundle a bunch of things in a single PR. Um, and this is where it's like, I'm sure we could improve this 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 text here. Um, okay, I, I'm looking at OSSF slash security reviews. Oh, so are are you seeing my screen? Uh, I thought I, I, I what I was interested in was the what the web page actually says. So yeah, I can go back to your screen, but I I, I was oh. I was way more worried about what this. You know, if somebody just shows up, what are they going to see? Oh yeah, so so we, we can we can move things. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So where is Aaron, that? No one's, no one's going to uh, under wiki. Wiki. Yeah. No one's going to see that ever. I never click on okay. wiki unless I know there's a link to it from the readme. Perfect. So we we got we have a. Uh, um. Yeah. We I mean, move that into the readme or a separate file linked to from the readme. I I I'm not so sure you want this in the wiki actually. I, I think yeah. the wiki. I, I, the the problem is that the wiki's not maintained as the same. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's associated with, and it is version controlled. I know, but it's it's different. Yeah, it's different, you. and it's not very visible. Yep. Um. Yeah, because I because for you know, uh, let's see. So let's so we'll go ahead and walk through this thing. Uh, let's see. I guess I I can click on the wiki myself. Oh wait, home yeah. disclosure policy or home. Uh, uh, nope, the third one, the what PR review process. Yeah, see, that's exactly wrong in my opinion. That tells me a process. I want to know what the criteria are, which uh, is not the same as a process. True. So if you so the quality, <laughs> yes. So, right. So so I, so I agree with one hundred percent of what you're saying. So yes, so I would I would put the quality, and I would actually put this right in the readme. You know. Yeah. We we were quite you know, all the reviews here. The goal is for them to meet this quality bar. Blop 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 and blop. In order for it to be accepted, there's a review process. See, click. <laughs> but I want I would very much want this quality bar list up front and center, like the README, because I I think basically when we pe when people show up to look at these reviews, we want to make the what are these supposed to do. Cool. Yeah. And so, for example, it's not just reasonable, incredible, but I would want supported by facts. Uh, yeah. So, in fact, I would say that's first fact based. <laughs> okay. Evidence based. Evidence. Evidence based. I like that. Uh, I could click and facts edit. Are tricky. It's a. It's a. Yeah. It's it's a wiki. I can click and edit. Right. So I will I will slip in something. Please fix. Yeah. Uh, evidence uh, evidence based. Okay. Um, uh, uh, while opinions are allowed, all opinions must be clearly supported by specific evidence such as analysis of source code. Please show snippet. Uh, <laughs> showing code snippets is recommended. What, what about positive? So so I, I looked at this 12 line code snippet. It looks totally fine. Nothing jumped out. Tools. Yeah. But see, that's still, that's still that's still analysis such as analysis, you know, mm -hmm. you know you know, they've they got to be supported by specific yeah. evidence. Right. Okay. So, so, so the evidence can be: I looked at this with my eyes, and as a security expert, I didn't see anything that that jumped out as even remotely problematic. Therefore, I waved my wand sure. and said, "Say it's fine." Yeah. 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 Um, okay. We only have 
We have like 30 seconds left in the meeting. I would really like to get an owner to refactor the readme wiki and kind of make that much uh, easier to read and understand and put it all in the readme on the front page and move things around and kind of just do a general polishing. Would anyone like to volunteer for this? I, I think I can help you. Um, <laughs> please add I, the... I, um, yeah, yeah and I, I would be happy to uh, to help as well. Wonderful. Um, my my yeah. day today is a little crazy, but um, if you give me a day or two <laughs> when I don't have back to back meetings, um, I, you know, I could uh, take a shot at this tomorrow. Don't worry. I can help uh, uh, with they... some criteria as well. There's nothing okay. new, like crazy new content wise, right? We're just talking like refactoring, like making it more readable and like moving that over and stuff, right? Or basically. That... Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, I can I can jump in as well. Okay. And Amir, I heard you too. Yep, I can help with some of the criteria and stuff like that. Wonderful. Yeah. So if if it makes more sense to if you see something, just open up an issue about it because I think four four editors might go into like merge hell. <laughs> well, how's this, Mike? Your job is to review as quickly as possible, and if you like it, merge it fast, so yes. uh, that we have fewer uh, merge conflicts. Yep, that works. Uh, but, but I, I think you, know, you asked, hey, what, when can we announce? And I think that's the key: is putting that information front and center. Okay. Gotcha. So we'll, we'll say week of three fifteen ish. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yep. Okay, thank okay. you so very and much. Wonderful. Thank you, thank and you I'm, I'm going to share that blog run. post shortly, and uh, yes. any feedback and edits are welcome. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. Thanks i got to run to another Thanks meeting. Everybody. Take care. Cheers. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye, all.